Hello there. Uh, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, I am back to Rust, and today I'm bringing you error handling. Okay, so uh, an important thing to note is that Rust creates, um, well, distinguishes between two types of errors recoverable errors and unrecoverable errors. Okay, so let's start off with unrecoverable errors. Now, unrecoverable errors, they're qualified as unrecoverable because they cause panics. And um, we've caused several panics in previous videos in this channel. Um, and an easy example is just to create um, vector v uh, with a length of 3 and then trying to access an index that's out of bounds. So um, if we run this, so if we just cargo run, you see that we get a panic. Um, at index out of bounds, the link, uh, the link is 3, but the index is 99. And we can see that the panic is happening in the slice library. So what does this happen? What, what does this mean? This means that the slice library, it's making a call to the panic macros. And, and that's what's qualifying this error as unrecoverable. Because the code just uh, well crashes, and you can make these calls uh, really anywhere. Um, if we wanted to, we can just comment this out, and I could call a panic right here. I could say panic. I could just say um, crash, and if I cargo run, you'll see that we get uh, treadmill panicked at crash. Okay, and it happened right here. Okay, but now um, let's comment this out. Let's go back here because there's something else that I want to show you. Um, so cargo run. We know that the panic call is coming from the slice library, but this doesn't really help us debug our code. Like it, clearly, in this case, it's it's quite obvious what's happening. We know where the index out of bounds is happening. But what if you have a larger code library? Then how do you know? So something you can do is you can sell, um, set your Rust backtrace environment variable to 1. It actually tells you right here in the notes. Run with Rust backtrace 1 to display a backtrace. Now if we cargo run this, you'll see that we get, well, we get a backtrace to what's actually happening. And we can go through it and try to find uh, where specifically our code is coming from. Okay, so here it is. My folder is called error handling, and it's in the main folder, and it's happening in, no, in the main file, and it's, sorry, in the function main, and it's in line uh, 9. So if we go back here, we see that it is indeed in line 9. Okay, so you can use Rust backtrace to help you um, debug your code. Uh, whenever we panic, What's happening inside is something called stack unwinding. Uh, and what stack unwinding does is it sort of walks back on your code and cleans up the stack. And as you can probably guess, this, pro this whole process is quite expensive. And so something we can do, and several people do in, uh, in better projects and whatnot, is you can go to your cargo toml file, you can set up a profile.release and you can see that on panic instead of stack unwinding you just like to abort and yeah so this instead of doing stack unwinding it will just abort so then you're leaving it to the OS to do the actual uh, well, cleanup and yeah so this is about it for unrecoverable errors now let's talk about recoverable errors to introduce you to recoverable errors, I first have to introduce you to the to this enum defined in the standard library called the result. Um, it's very similar to what we had the option enum, in which we have these generics, which once again we haven't covered yet, but consider them just a placeholder for um, another type. And yeah, so we have this enum defined in the standard library, very similar to the option enum in which we have two variants. The OK variant, in which will be will just telling us that whatever operation we performed happened fine. And the error variant, 
which tells us that whatever operation we did didn't work out fine. Inside of the OK, we'll have what we actually wanted out of the operation. And here will be the error, which we can then display. Okay. So, yeah, this is already included in the prelude, so we can use it at any time. And to show you how this is used, I'm just going to code something real quick, and then I'll go over it. Perfect. Now, what we're doing is we're creating, uh, we're trying to open a file called hello.txt. As you can probably guess, a lot could go wrong, the file could, well, simply not exist, and this will cause uh, the code to throw an error. Now, in here, we're just, we're sort of converting this recoverable error to an unrecoverable error because we're panicking, but you sort of see how result is used. So if we return an OK, and inside of the OK we'll have the file, we'll just return the file. So F will be our actual file. Um, otherwise, if we receive an error, so that, for example, the file doesn't exist, we'll just panic. And this is such a common programming pattern in Rust that we've developed shortcuts. So for example, something that you could do instead of this is you could say let F equals... Um, once again, just, just open the file. But now instead of having the all the match, we could say unwrap. Now what unwrap does is it panics if we receive an error, and it gets the contents of the OK variant onto F. Okay. Another also shortcut is instead of unwrap, we can use expect and the only difference really is that you can say what the error message is, so I don't know, we can say oof. And yeah, so as I mentioned, this is a very common programming pattern, which is why we have two shortcuts for it. Of course, if we do this, we're sort of removing some of the um, programmability or customization that a match allows. For example, once again, I'll just code something real quick and I'll be right back. Alright, so in here, um, I'm using this error kind that I said that I imported in the beginning. And what I'm doing is, okay, if we manage to open hello.txt, we just put the file into F. So file is owned by F. If not, then I want to match what kind of error we have. And if it's an error kind not found, then I want to create this file hello.txt. If we're fine, then OK, we'll, file 2 will just be owned by F. And then if this didn't work out for whatever reason, so say we don't have permissions to edit the folder, then we can panic and then display the error. Of course, match is exhaustive, so we can say just a, a sort of this default placeholder for whatever else can happen. OK, so yeah, well, unwrap and expect are quite useful. Sometimes you want to be um, a bit more specific in your code and you want to just use matches. Okay. Um, and this was matching other errors that I was mentioning here in the beginning, so perhaps I'm just saying it here. All right, moving on, we'll talk about propagation of errors. Another very common programming pattern is propagating errors. And what I mean by propagating error is that, so say that we have this function called read username. Instead of returning, uh, say, well, the username string, we'll return a result, which will be either an OK with a string or an error. And then we let the calling code handle uh, whatever's happening. So that's the whole basis of why the error is recoverable. You can, you can let it to the programmer to deal with it. And yeah, OK, so in here, we want to create this function called read username which will open a file, read this file to a string, that string will be a username, and we'll return it instead of an OK or an error if we have an error. To do this, I just commented out uh, the code we had previously, and I imported um, read. Okay, 
So I'll code it real quick and uh, we'll be right back. Perfect. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're opening the file and we're using the common programming pattern that I showed here. If the file opens, we'll um, put file into F, but if it doesn't, then we'll just return the error. So we'll add an early error that we just want to return. Now, if this worked out and we have a file, the code will proceed and we'll create a string S and we'll read from the file to the string s. So we're padding, passing a mutual reference to the string here. So we can change it. Uh, if this works out, then we just want to... Now note, this is an expression. So it's the last... It doesn't have a semicolon and it's the last match in the function. So we'll be returning this OK or otherwise we'll be returning this error. OK. Now this is all fine and dandy, but it's too long. <laughs> and again, I mentioned this is a programming pattern, so it's, it happens quite often. So we've created a shortcut for it. Now the shortcut's real quick, so I'll just do that in two seconds. So the question mark operator was um, designed to be exactly like a match. To be more specific, exactly like this match. So if we get an error, then it will return this error. Um, otherwise, we'll just proceed with the code. Okay. Um, so yeah, here we'll, we'll get this file. So exactly like we had here, we'll get this file inside of the OK variant and proceed. Otherwise, return. In here, um, we'll create this new string. And then with this new string, we'll read to it. To a mutable reference of it with also the question mark operator so if this didn't work out we'll return the error otherwise we'll proceed with the code right now we just don't want to proceed with the code this is the last part of it so we want to return an okay with this changed s okay so yeah that's the shortcut of it um, another cool thing that you can do even even shorter than this is you can Let's just let's just grab this. Um, and then you can string them. So you can say read to string. Um, oh, actually, here we'll have to have created the string already. We'll say um, mutable s. Once again, the question mark. And if this works out, then we're just going to return. And OK. Plus. So, yeah, it can get really as short as you want. Um, yeah, um, an important thing to note, though, is that this um, read to string will be returning the error. So you can't really use it in main, because, well, main doesn't return anything, unless you change your main signature. And there's a way to do that which sort of goes into topics that I didn't really want to cover as of now. So I think what I'll do is just like I made the quick, uh, quick DRES video, I'll make another quick video and explaining how to use them in main. Because, well, this way, if you don't want to, if you don't want to know it yet, you don't watch the video. If you do want to know it, then you watch the video. And yeah, this will be about it for today's video we didn't really run any code but i encourage you to write this all on your own and and try it and yeah um i'll see you next video bye, -bye.